Now, do you find yourself thinking about work while you're driving, while you're playing with your children or while talking to others? If so, you may well be a workaholic. And a study just published has found that working too hard can be not just bad for workers' health, but bad for their productivity too. To discuss the phenomenon, I'm joined by self-confessed workaholic, magician Keith Barry. Keith, you're very welcome. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank and, you. And uh, by reformed, uh, we call her a former workaholic, Joanne Hessian, who's managing director of QED Training. Joanne, you're very welcome as well. Thanks, John. And we'll find out what brought you on down the road of reform. But Keith, you were explaining to me that in your life, there's a certain week or 10 days in the year when you just crash. Yeah, I used to kind of crash every year. I mean, I, I suppose to, to backtrack a second, I mean, we were talking, like, I, I think sometimes people don't believe me when I say my average kind of working day is about 16 hours. And then that can ramp up depending on whether I'm doing a TV show or a live show right up to 18 or 20 hour days. And I generally sleep about five hours a night. Uh, and then I can reduce that or increase that as it needs. But I used to crash and burn. I mean, you can only do that for so long, I think, anybody. And I used to crash and burn every year. Every year at Christmas, actually, I used to get sick because uh, I would stop. And the second I would stop, my immune system would go, this is great, we're stopping too. And then, honestly, I'd end up in bed and sick for days. And uh, that hasn't happened now in a couple of years. Uh, like, uh, the last time I've been like really sick was probably about four years ago. But actually, it did just happen this week, just gone, because I've been going for the last four years pretty much nonstop and on low amounts of sleep. And uh, last Sunday night, I wrapped, I have a new TV show for TV3, and I wrapped that last Sunday night. And then, literally, Sunday night, just started getting sick, like vomiting. And then that lasted for three or four days so I was in bed for three or four days then uh I won't go into when details, you, when you were but saying let's just say sick. I mean, yeah. really sick from all ends, everything. Was, <laughs> okay, you know, we, we and, get uh, the message. But but so, so that's three or four days that you just expect. It's it's almost like the adrenaline rush has halted. Yeah. And you're hit. It's you're just hit pure back. exhaustion, mentally and physically. And yeah. and then at the end of that four days, then I felt like, literally like I'd been hit by a train. So for the next four days, uh, you know, just joint and muscle ache and, and all that kind of stuff so Everything. like properly sick for a week yeah. uh, but now I'm grand again and ready to uh, and, and I, I ready kept, to cope I kept, with the other 300 and I whatever I kept working through it that's the yeah. funny thing you know? well, when you, but when you say your 15 hour day uh, Keith take us through an average day in the life of Keith Barry the workaholic well there is no real average day but I, I suppose you know uh, you know I get up probably around 7 o'clock in the morning because I always stay up till around whatever 2, 3, 4 or whatever time you know, my work takes me to but yeah I'll get up early in the morning have breakfast then I consider going to the gym part of my uh, work now people might laugh at that and scoff at it but I hate the gym and I wouldn't be going only for I have to be physically fit for what I do so I'll get up go to the gym uh, work out then I'll take a bunch of meetings press meetings whatever it is uh, and then a lot of my work would consist of the business aspect of what I do which people don't really see so it is setting up like a tour it's setting up a tv show it's taking meetings then when most people's working day to come to a stop so i'll do that for the whole day you'll do that yourself yeah you don't I, I, mean, I have a manager of yeah. course uh, and he sets up stuff but i go to all the meetings with him i sit across everything so i'm there myself physically for all the stuff and then at the end of the, or i could be filming a tv show for example during the day so i mean that's a kind of a, a recent example i'll get up at 7 a.m uh go straight into studio into makeup uh, then we'll f- rehearse, block out the, the, you know, what we're going to film that day uh, and then film all that day. Then I'll start prepping for the next day's filming that night. When everybody's gone to bed, I go home, start prepping and then I write all the material myself. And you have to squash all that into a short space of time. The only way to do that is to work long hours. Mm. Um, and then and so, if- so much of your work then is, is obviously based on performance. So there, mm. there's an awful lot goes into those performances. Yeah. So, and, yeah. that, and then, I mean, just quickly, I mean, if I'm not doing a TV show, then when my day ends here, like if I'm finished doing press and taking meetings and so on and so on, when five o'clock hits, that's when LA wakes up. And, you know, I spend probably six months of every year in LA yeah. working over there. So I start getting on Skype, taking phone can calls you, can, there. Can you not magic yourself some extra few hours? I wish I could, yeah. And then I get creative at night. So yeah. that's when I write is at night as yeah, well, you know. Yeah, yeah. It sounds, it sounds terrific, I have to I say. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't mind it at all. And, and uh, Joanne, you're looking on uh, very impressed uh, with uh, Keith's day you're a reformed uh, workaholic I think that's the best way to describe you how bad were you when you were a fully fledged workaholic take us through your day yeah well like Keith um, I work for myself I've worked for myself for over 15 years now and I think one of the things about people that work for themselves is that we absolutely love what we do so a lot of the times you don't see it as work you work all the time and definitely I would have like Keith again wouldn't have a typical day 
but would have worked late until the evenings, easily worked 60, 70 hours a week. Um, I wouldn't survive on quite as little sleep as Keith would have uh, then. But definitely, I think for me, it was things like when I would be getting to go into holidays, I'd be skidding into Christmas. I'd be skidding into holidays. I did all that. I did it for many years, but uh, no more. And how we say, what sort of work were you doing and how would the day, you know your day manifest itself? In other words, when you realised, oh, here, this is a little bit too much for Joanne. Yeah, well, what we do is um, we help people start their own business. And once they're in business, we help them to, to stay in business. So we're a training company. I have a training company. So our my, my work would have involved a lot of tender writing, a lot of reporting. At the big early stages, I'd have been doing a lot of training as well. I could be training in the evening in Cork driving back up from Cork, back in again, delivering again, eight o'clock the next morning. I mean, that would have been many years ago that I, that I would have been working like that. But that's the way it would have gone. Mm. But, um, and the mother of three children. I'm the mother of three children. Yeah, I've three, so they had three to little be, girls. That, that had yeah. to be balanced with their needs as well. Yeah, I did. And I like, and I like what I do. I really love what I do. Mm. I, lo- I love education and I, and I love what I do. And I didn't find it a difficulty. I mean, I never took maternity leave. It just wasn't part of um I, I just always wanted to keep on working that's the way that I wanted to do it um so when did the pe- really when did the, when did the penny drop that this, was, this was just too much to take on um I think a few years ago actually the real thing for me was that I was sort of, what I was thinking was was that um I'm working really really hard but I'm not getting the outcomes that I really want um, and I wasn't I felt I wasn't getting the performance that I really wanted and I wanted really transformational change is what I wanted I wanted a step change for my business and bringing it from one place to another place and I bigger, couldn't a bigger a bigger uh, business um bigger but also smarter I think mm. is I needed to work smarter mm. I knew I wasn't working smart enough um, and so I did a lot of reading around it some fantastic books out there called The Way We're Working Isn't Working by Tony Schwartz Corporate Athlete um, you know all these kind of did a lot of reading around it they were fantastic uh, and were really they, changed what, my mind what, about it what were they telling you Joanne? What they were saying was was that it's just not sustainable. Mm-hmm. It's just not sustainable at all that we need to take regular rest periods, that we, we can't keep working like that. You can't keep working. I mean, sleep deprivation is a form of torture. <laughs> so keep on doing it to yourself all of the time is just not good for you. And down to basics of just looking after ourselves, you know, getting enough water, getting the right nutrition, getting exercise, um, but getting sleep, you know, th- we need it. And entrepreneurs are ridiculous at not doing this we That's really because are they're so insecure about the next day and their business it's and very what tough might it yeah. is it is very tough it is very tough uh, so what, joanne hessian now her lifestyle is much more balanced is it yeah and it's great yeah it's much more balanced i mean i i now enjoy every holiday time that i take so mm-hmm. i'm not skidding into it anymore i get good holidays every year i get quite a few numbers of weeks holidays a year i mean i get over 10 weeks holidays a year which is great That's what um but uh, you know I, you have, I have a young family i well i have a, t- a fantastic team mm-hmm. that work in qed they're absolutely fantastic um i think as well i learned how to focus which you know now is a really difficult thing for for people to do and we spend hours and hours and hours actually working in activity and doing things but not really focusing mm. so i had to really learn how to focus on what was important and what was important in my job and what was it that I really could contribute to the company mm-hmm. um, and really to focus on that and not be doing absolutely everything else in the company as well. So what, what are you telling Keith Barry this morning here? Uh, you need John. some sleep, Keith. <laughs> well, I got sleep for last <laughs> week, so I've had enough sleep. I, to, I can't do you for the <laughs> other 51 weeks, I, I have to write the new tour that's coming up. I know you're going to mention yes, that in a second, yes, aren't yeah. you? But, uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, but I'm just wondering, like, uh, do you ever sit down and, and, and watch a, a TV show for a couple ah, of hours? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be like I, I am obsessive with what I do, and I, and the reason I guess I, I don't consider myself a workaholic. I got lucky enough to turn my hobby into my profession, mm-hmm. and if you have a passion for something, it's not really work. I mean, let's be honest about it. Uh, and you know, I am an entertainer, I'm a magician, mentalist, hypnotist, whatever you want to call me. But I, I mean, here's my problem. You know, I've got uh, Joanne's wonderful book here. You know, don't get a job, and I do, I don't have a job. But here's the thing. I've got about 10 different projects on the go right now. I've got a book that I need to write. I've got, like I do seminars, a lot of motivational seminars actually. I do them over uh, primarily in the US. Uh, But each one is specific. So I write, uh, you know, the seminar depending on who I'm doing it for. So I've got to write those. Then, uh, you know, I'm going to set up a hypnotherapy clinic uh, because I'm, you know, I've done a lot of hypnotherapy in the past for therapeutic uh, purposes and I'm going to set up a clinic. So I have to get my head around when I'm going to do that. Then I have to, as I said, write the new two. 
And and you know, for does me, no, does sleep no, no. takes a back burner. But uh, to go back to your question, I do. I sit down and watch Love, Hate, and things like oh, that. Oh, good. I'm delighted to hear yeah. a bit of violence. No. Yeah, yeah. But but I almost got like, carried away with work there again. You see, yes. just for a second. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Question, does it not you know? phase you with all these balls in the air, and you have to juggle them, and you have no, to? No, not at all. I, I do. I do need to prioritize now a lot, and um, I find that difficult because mm. you know, if I want to set up a hypnotherapy clinic, I think that would mean probably taking a year out and not being an entertainer and focusing focusing solely on that but I'm not ready to do that just yet because I'm enjoying being an entertainer far too much at the moment mm. um, so that's my primary focus right now uh, you know acting is another thing that I, you know I'm not searching for it I consider myself a bad actor but these opportunities seem to continuously arise for me you're going, to, you're going to be in the next series of Love Hate are you? no 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 not at all but, but you know I worked on a movie last year called Now You See Me as a consultant on it and uh, so you just love work you love projects you love doing something yeah, new you love yeah, to yeah. And, yeah. and I think you can survive a low amount of sleep I met an 87 year old mentalist last week David Burglas and he stays up every he beats me but hands down he stays up every night till 6 to yes, 8 a.m. you're only a slacker Keith. yeah I, absolutely uh, jo- Joe and Limerick here says I'm not sure if I have the right man but ask Keith if he ever uses self-hypnosis to recharge his energy field I do actually yes it's a good question I mean I'm a firm believer in hypnosis for all things psychological I've done it myself and many many people uh, and it can be used uh, to power nap so in other words I'll self-hypnotise myself to get 30 minutes sleep and if you put yourself into the right kind of sleep that's the equivalent of getting like 5 hours worth of how, sleep you how know? do you do how do you do that uh, well, it's through creative visualization and a relaxation technique where you first of all shut down your physical body using a relaxation technique and then you learn how to shut down your conscious mind using, I use a sleep stairs, some people use a lift or an elevator, all that, but it's a learned technique. Mm. I mean, the best advice is to go out and buy a book. I mean, I know Joanne has spoken as well. I mean, I'm a voracious book reader. I mean, I buy 40 books at a time on Amazon and that's part of my research as well. I just bought uh, my next show is going to be all about the greatest inventors of all time. So I just bought 40 books on Einstein, Da Vinci. So that's my latest batch of research is reading all those guys. I'm exhausted just listening to yeah. you, uh, Keith. A- and Joanne, of course, a lot of employers, a lot of the problem in, in jobs that aren't as fun-filled as, as Keith's, a lot of employers would be telling their employees or would, would be viewing their employees in a more positive light if they stay longer or work through lunch. But you reckon that's all, that's all bunkum? Yeah, I think that I, I, I think you're right, uh, John. But what not enough people are doing is focusing on the outcomes and the results. Mm. They're focusing on the time that is spent doing things. Um, and there's, there's a, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. It's completely different. And, and in fact, people are being monitored, their performance being monitored based on the hours that they're spending at work rather than what they're actually producing or what outcomes they're actually achieving. Um, and more and more and more, we need to focus on that. OK, well, listen, as I say, I'm exhausted listening to Keith. I'm delighted, Joanne, that you have seen the light and that you have time in your day now to spend two or three hours on the couch watching something, would you, with the kids? I would. Yeah, I good, would. good. Anyway, Keith mentioned his forthcoming show. It's called Brain Hacker, Keith. Yeah. It's in the Olympia Theatre from the 1st of April uh, for 14 shows and tickets. Uh, can be got on, on Ticketmaster and more information. And I'm also touring the country as well, <laughs> starting March. <laughs> and you're probably the walking to each venue, are you? Yeah, well? no, no, I'm starting March 14th in Athlone, doing 50 dates total. So this is the Great. biggest tour to yeah, date. Yeah, so I'll tell you, as I tickets said. Tickets are up on keithbarry.com. You're, you're, you're some slacker. <laughs> Keith Barry and Joanne Hessian, thanks a million for coming thanks. in. Thank in, you. in. In a, in a moment, we'll be joined by the singing Garda.